Now we can turn to the second argument because I think it represents yet a different pattern, a slightly different pattern of argument, nonetheless a logically strong, well-formed, a valid pattern of argument. All communists admire Karl Marx. Ronald Reagan did not admire Karl Marx. Therefore, Ronald Reagan was not a communist. Now, what is the conclusion of that? Ronald Reagan was not a communist, right? Therefore, indicates that we have a conclusion coming up. Now, what are the premises? Ronald Reagan did not admire Karl Marx, and all communists admire Karl Marx. Now, I'm claiming that this is a logically strong, a valid form of inference. So let's take a look at what the pattern is. Remember, we're going to replace communists by the letter A. Admire Karl Marx by the letter B. Ronald Reagan by X. Not admiring Karl Marx did not ad did was not a B. Ronald Reagan X is not a communist is not an A. So, in depicting the pattern, all communists admire Mar Karl Marx. All A's are B's admirers of Karl Marx. X Ronald Reagan is not an a B, an admirer of Karl Marx. Therefore, X, Ronald Reagan, is not an A. Now, if we're looking at the pattern of argument, remember we'll take a look at the Venn diagram, because it will help us understand our picture of the va inference. The, the Venn diagram will help us understand why this is a good pattern of argument? Well, let's look at the class of B's. You know, everything that's a B is in that circle. And we see all A's are B's, so everything that's an A is within the circle of B's. Well, the second premise tells us that X is not a B. So if we're going to put X anywhere, if we look at the circle containing all the B things, the X has to be outside of it over here the X is outside of it but we see from that we can conclude that X is not an A because there's no way that that X can be in that circle and in the little circle but not in the bigger circle and let's just stop for a second just to see that we get the same results if we try to prove it invalid that is we're going to end up contradicting ourselves just for the reason that this diagram shows us. If we look at the claim, or if we try to, what we're going to try to do to prove this invalid, to prove the argument above invalid, uh, we're going to try to come up with a situation where the premises are true and the conclusion is false and we're not going to contradict ourselves. Well, let's say the world is pretty much the way our world is. The communists are just the people who think that Karl Marx was right in his social and political philosophy. Um, so all communists are do admire Marx in this situation. And let's say Ronald Reagan was just like the President of the United States that many of you have heard about, many of us are familiar with, maybe many of us remember when he was president, maybe not many of us in the class, but uh, the older guys like me do. Um, but, but Ronald Reagan did not, was not an admirer of Marx, was not an admirer of uh, his social and political philosophy, he thought it had very bad consequence. He thought Karl Marx was wrong. So in this situation, Ronald Reagan was not an admirer of Marx. Now, if we, we have to continue without contradicting ourselves, explaining the situation or describing the situation that makes it false, that makes Ronald Reagan a communist. But we're going to run into trouble. We can't make that conclusion false in our scenario, in our possible situation, because the first premise tells us that 
if you're a communist, you're an admirer of Marx. So if it's false, Ronald Reagan is a communist or was a communist, but it can't be because we end up contradicting ourselves. So notice, looking at the pattern of argument and looking at the other method of finding out whether a um, whether this particular argument is a good argument, a valid argument, a good form, I should say, of argument, a good pattern, we end up with exactly the same result.